Hi guys, it's Claris and welcome to another video tutorial with me. In this video, we are going to go back to our basics in terms of loose and fun watercolor florals on a smaller scale. So we are using smaller brushes this time. So really quickly, here's the products that I'm going to be using for this video. Feel free to use something similar or if you are interested in these products, I have listed them in the description below. So we've got the Princeton Velvet Touch number no. 4, Princeton Neptune number no. 6. And for my colors, I'm using my Dalaroni set of 48. Uh, specifically speaking, the Quinacridone Magenta, the Permanent Rose. I'm not sure which of the two I'll be using, maybe both, we'll see. I've got the Cobalt Violet, which I think goes really well with the pinks. And then we've got a mix of olive green and sap green. Again, very similar greens, but uh, I'm keeping them handy because I might or might not use them. I will figure it out as we go along. But throwing in an additional twist to this video today is going to be our metallics. So for those of you who remember, I recently did a video using makeup to paint flowers and that was fantastic. So now I'm back on my metallic watercolors and this time I'll be using the bronze by KMS watercolor, uh, which is right there. And then last but not least, for my paper, I'm going to be using Bao Hong watercolor paper. So I've zoomed in a bit so you guys can see me a little bit better. And uh, I do have a palette handy onto over here on the side just to mix colors just in case I need it. But I think for the most part, these are simplistic enough that I can just take the color and paint on here with the exception of um, water to color mixes. If I need more water, then obviously I'll use the palette to mix the color in there. Okay, so um, before I begin, guys, please hit that like button and subscribe button as it really does help my channel grow and I can continue to think of great fun videos and execute and post it on here for you guys. All right, so let's begin. I will be tag teaming these two brushes here on the go as we create our flowers. So we're gonna be doing flowers very similar to what we did last week, in last week's video that is, right here. These tiny ones with the, with the that are almost kind of like daisies. So similar fashion and similar style. And here we go. So I'll be doing the petals with the number six and then we'll use the number four to do inner details for the center, okay? So I'm going to mix a couple of colors and let me just break this down for you before we begin. So we'll start off with doing our main flowers facing upward and they'll be the bigger ones will be more to, towards the bottom and as we paint more flowers higher up on the page they'll be smaller. So we have a little bit of hierarchy from large at the bottom to small at the top. So heavy at the bottom, lighter at the top, okay? So let's start off with doing a little bit of mixing. I think I will go with the, what's this, quinacridone magenta. So just getting a little bit of this mixed up with extra water on here. And let's take it away. So making sure that my brush, the tip of my brush is not super thick. That's why I'm kind of rubbing it against this area to take off as much water as I can. And then using just the point, we're gonna lightly grace to create these little lines in a circular fashion almost. So like I mentioned, the biggest one is going to be at the bottom and, or the bigger ones at the bottom. So here we go. So starting off here, lightly grazing. And we're gonna kind of go around all the way around. So as I'm going around and creating these petals, I'm dipping the tip of my brush in water to get a slightly lighter variation of this color. In watercolor, a little goes a long way. And this is where that really shows because you gotta mix it with the water to get that nice translucent um, romantic look. So now that I have this, what I'm gonna do is get some more color from the color cake directly. Here's where the magic happens. Before this dries off, dab that into the center. 
And I'm even going to kind of, in some areas, in the lighter ones, going to extend it from the top of the petal all the way down to the center. And this way we get a beautiful light to dark enhancement to our flower. Feel free to add in darker, darker strokes in between here and there, which really emphasizes that whole, um, gives you that nice impression of fullness to the flower. Beautiful, right? Simple, loose, easy. White space is your friend, so don't forget that as you go along. Perfect, so we're done this. Before we end off going, or before we start the next flower, I wanna do one more thing just to make sure that you guys get this, is get some of the bronze with the number four, and then I'm dropping that in before the colors dry up. Because again, I want the bronze to kind of seep into the pink and give us that beautiful balance between like a plain color and then the shimmer. And that's the whole idea here. This is what we're doing for our flowers. This is what's gonna make them different from all the other flowers we've done. So continuing on, same tactic. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna create a bunch of pink ones before we move on to our mauve or cobalt violet, I believe. So same idea, starting with the lighter color. Let's do another big one over here, slightly lower this time. And I'm gonna show you for the third flower, the third big flower we do, I'm gonna show you another technique if you are having problems creating or leaving white space in the center as you create these petals. So just hang tight till we finish this one. And then I'll give you my two cents on what else you can try to better equip yourself with ample enough white space in the center. So like I said, we started off with doing these petals using a nice dark, sorry, light shade of pink and then getting the color directly from the color cake. We're going in, adding dabs to the center all around and then even throwing in some strokes in the lighter areas here just to get a beautiful, nice blend. But making sure we're leaving ample enough space, white space around, okay? There we go. So now we've got this. Let's do our final step for this flower, which is adding our metallics in the center, getting a nice blend. Okay, so that's that. So now for our third flower, here's what I recommend. If you're having issues leaving white space in the center, here's what you need to do. We're gonna start off with getting our light pink Actually, this time, let's switch it around. Let's make the third big flower the mauve. So I'm gonna get a nice watered down version of the mauve. Mix that on my palette here, and we are going to do one. Let's do one, I don't wanna do it this way, but then this would be, yeah, let's do it over here, just at the top of this one. And here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to create a, a circle with just dots just like that. And then extending using the same technique for our petals, I'm gonna go ahead and create these petals all around. And then as I kind of get to the center, we're kind of moving, dispersing that dot of mauve into our petals. Super simple, super easy, just to fix, a quick fix to Anyone having issues trying to get a nice circle for your centers. And then going in with the darker mauve, we are dropping this in to get a nice beautiful blend. Nice amount of darks and lights. Keeping things loose, fun and pretty. And then last but not least, we go in with our metallics and then dropping that in right in the center. Simple, fun, easy, makes a great idea for cards, greeting cards or even wall hangings, whatever projects you have on the go. And the metallic mixed in with this regular color, color is such a great juxtaposition or just like makes such an interesting, interesting um, effect really, something different. 
and that is all there is to it. So let's create a couple more and then we'll continue and finish off with stems and leaves. Okay, so we are done the flowers or I'm done the flowers and I've done a couple more over here. And now we are going to do our final step, which is going to be using our number four to get some of the metallics and do our stems and such. So once again, keeping with the whole loose feel of things, we're gonna get some metallic using the number four. And I love the number four velvet touch for this because it's got such a nice fine pointed tip and it is the perfect size for things like stems and leaves and even petals on a thinner scale like this. But if you're comfortable using a thicker brush, why not? So for the bottom, we're not doing stems at the bottom here, but we will be doing stems for the flowers coming floating in the air upward. So I like to give my stems a little bit of flair, make it look like they're almost dancing. And that's why I'm giving, having them almost like in a curve. So if you can do it with in one swoop, fabulous. I suggest taking a sheet of paper and just kind of practicing your thin lines because you just need to graze using just the tip of your brush. And that's how you get nice, thin results for your stems. And it's okay if you have a little bit of break in between, that's totally fine. I feel like it actually adds and enhances the whole looseness to your, your painting. So here's one more. And then finally, we can get to doing some leaves and such. So I want to start off because there's all this white space here. I want to do a couple of leaves using our metallics down here first and then we can move on to doing it higher up there. So here we go. For the leaves I'm using the tip of my brush pressing down and trailing towards the center and then doing the same thing for the other side. So we've got a nice shape for our leaves. Feel free to leave a little bit of white space in there if you need to. And you can even do the leaves starting from inside outward. Give it a little bit of curve at the end as well to keep it nice and whimsical, loose and fun. Let's do a couple here. I've got tons of leaf videos if this is something you're struggling with. I'll list a couple down in the description if you're brand new to watercolor, especially floral watercolor painting. And you can check that out. So I'm going to do smaller ones to the side here just because everything doesn't need to be super big. All right, there we go. I'm gonna add one more here, small one, and then add one peeking out from behind this flower here. And we'll do a little bit of green in between just so that it doesn't look entirely golden, giving it a little bit of balance. To our whole thing, but let's finish off the leaves at the top before we get to that. So <clears throat> I like to do blades of grass almost sort of situations. So adding a stem, another stem this way, and then just kind of lightly adding strokes like this to your leaves. And I'm even gonna do some for the flower stems as well. So we can have one that's kind of nice and tall right there. And make the leaves a bit tinier on this one just so that it looks nice and tall and doesn't interfere with the big flowers that we have there. And last but not least, let's kind of really add just a couple here. 
simple elements that help us exercise our muscle movement for these strokes, but then we're also exercising our composition skills as well. So now we can add some green. So I've got the two greens here, uh, and I think I would like to use more of the olive green than anything else. So for the leaves, I'm going to be using number six, and like I mentioned, the olive green. So here we go, getting a little bit of that olive green. And I'm going to add a couple of leaves around here. And feel free to make them darker. So as I'm adding in a watered down version of the leafy strokes, I'm going in and getting more color directly from the color cake and sort of dropping that in there. Same thing in here. Get some coming out from this flower here, some in between. Feel free to add in some protruding from the side of our metallic looking ones and you can even drop some in between at the bottom here we want to make sure this area is nice and full and robust looking Here's another one. You really, I would say, I would encourage you to just use your own composition skills and figure out where you would like to place your leaves. You don't necessarily have to follow exactly what I am doing. In fact, if you don't wanna add the leaves, you don't need to. You can just sort of leave it open-ended and end it with just the nice flowers and your metallic leaves and you should be fine as well. I just like to enhance things just a little bit more to kind of bring interesting elements to the end results. And let's see, I'm gonna even add a little bit of strokes, oops, added some there, in between the flowers just to really amp up the fullness in between here. So adding some green here. And through this exercise, you sort of learn how to add additional plops of color here and there to really amp up the fullness and fluffing, what I like to call fluffing, of, the, of your end results or a composition. I'm going to continue doing a couple more. Notice how my strokes are very loose and I'm almost adding like little dots at the end here to kind of phase it out a little bit. Now just going to add a couple of strokes of green in between here. I'm not going to, I'm going to try and not overlap things. And I want to try and keep things whimsical, loose, and almost a tad bit lighter than what these bottom leaves look like. Except at the bottom edge of the leaves, which is where I always say this is my staple. If you want to add dark shades of color anywhere on your leaves, it is at the bottom where it attaches to the stem and at the tip. So leaves on that scale would be nice. Or stems on that scale. And then I'm just adding a couple of lines or strokes rather to kind of give it that nice 
grassy feel. And then we're done. So this is it. One last thing that I would like to do is give it a little bit of a splatter. So taking my my green, I've just dipped the tip of my brush in water, and I'm just going to lightly tap. I want to tap at the bottom. I need, you know what, instead of using the number six, I'm going to use the number four because the number four will give us slightly smaller splatter and I have a little bit more control because right now it's kind of it's plopping in different areas and I want it to be more at the bottom here. So you can see how this tap gives me smaller, more clustered bits of splatter. And then let's just get more water on it to get a nice, loose, light green splatter. And we are done. That is it, guys. So let me know what you did, how you made out. Um, I would love to see your work, so please make sure to tag me if you post it on social media. And please hit that like button, hit the follow button, subscribe button, all that good stuff, as it really does help me continue to create more videos for you guys for fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, looking forward to seeing your work on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks, guys. We'll chat soon. Bye.